All right, FAQ number 100. Are blasphemous, intrusive thoughts the unpardonable sin? Another good question. Um, let's look about what the unpardonable sin is. Go to Matthew chapter 12. Matthew 12. Matthew chapter 12, verse 31. We'll start there. Okay, it says here, Wherefore I say unto you, All manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Okay, and people get all excited about this, and they say, you know, if I go hashtala shuntai untai botai, you know, whatever else like that, making fun of this uh, charismaniac thing that they call speaking in tongues, they'll say, you've blasphemed the Holy Ghost. No, I haven't. Okay, first of all, the modern-day charismatic, quote-unquote, speaking in tongues is not that at all. Okay, when you see speaking in tongues, the book of Acts, it's chapter 2, it is clearly defined as languages, known languages. Read it, okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 14, when there's unknown tongues, those tongues are simply, they're again, they're languages, and they're unknown simply because the people there that are the, you know, be like an English congregation will say, I know English is a later language created many centuries later, but let's just say, okay, I'll say it this way. It's a Greek group of people, and somebody comes in speaking Persian or something like this. Everybody goes, what's he saying? You know? And that's why you see a need for an interpreter. There's no need for interpreters in Acts chapter 2 or anywhere in the book of Acts as far as when people are speaking in tongues. There's no need for interpretation. And every time tongues are spoken in the book of Acts, a Jew is always present. Tongues are given for a sign. All right? By the time you hit 1 Corinthians chapter 12 through 14, it's talking about languages. And there are certain Christians that have a great ability to learn multiple languages. And they can also work as interpreters. It's a gift of the Holy Spirit. So this modern charismaniac thing of speaking in tongues is a lying uh, deception, essentially. I talked about that in other studies. But so when they come out and they say, you know, well, you've blasphemed the Holy Ghost. They're trying to refer to this, what's going on in Matthew chapter 20 or Matthew chapter 12, verse 31 through 32. That's not at all what the scripture is saying there. What's going on here, this unpardonable sin is, they're coming and they're attacking Jesus and they're saying he's a wine-bibber, a, a friend of publicans and sinners, a glutton. They're calling him all these names. And Jesus is saying, essentially, he's saying, look, you can look at me because I have a body of flesh just like you do. But you don't understand the fact that the spirit that's in me is actually the Holy Ghost in a pure, perfect form. There's no sin in Jesus' flesh. Whatever comes out of his mouth is all the Holy Spirit speaking. And they're going... Well, the spirit that's in you is a devil. And Jesus is going, okay, whoa, you know, hold on a second there. You can make fun of me because you just see me as a man. But if you make fun and you blaspheme the Holy Ghost that's within me, uh, then you have a problem. And notice what he says, verse uh, 32. It shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, when he's present in the first century, neither in the world to come, the millennial kingdom second coming of Christ when he comes down, and then that millennial kingdom time period. In that millennial kingdom, people are put to death for prophesying. Something as seemingly innocent as prophecy, they're put to death for it. All right. Again, I've covered that in other studies. So you cannot commit the unpardonable sin right now. It's not possible. Again, if you read Acts chapter 2, uh, these uh, Jews there in Acts on the day of Pentecost, um, they're actually mocking the early Christians while they're speaking in tongues. And they're saying, you know, these men are given the new wine. You know, they're drunk. And Peter stands up and he says, we're not drunk as ye suppose. You know, he's saying, you know, he's, he's uh, you know, laughing along with him because he's like seeing it's about the third hour of the day, essentially. He doesn't say, well, you've blasphemed the Holy Ghost. You don't have any forgiveness. Not at all what's going on there. Um, so it's not possible to blaspheme the Holy Ghost and have, you can blaspheme the Holy Ghost, I'm saying, but it's not the unpardonable sin. 
it's not that you're not going to be forgiven or anything else. You can be forgiven. Uh, you know, Paul writes about, you know, he was, how when he was lost, he said, who was before a blasphemer. You know, he was a blasphemer. And yet God forgave him and used him mightily. So uh, when people use God's name as profanity, I would say that's blasphemy. And yet God forgives them. God saves them. Some very foul-mouthed people out there that use God's name in vain and they get saved and their life changes and that's fine. Okay. But what about this thing of intrusive thoughts? Uh, well, um, let me type in another verse here. Trying to think of where this thing's at. Maybe I can find it quick. Um, what about that? Well, I'll tell you right now, uh, there are times that you will have thoughts come into your head as a saved Christian. Um, yeah, right there it is. You will have thoughts come into your mind and you'll just think, where on earth did that come from? I mean, just like, huh. <laughs> and it's your flesh. Um, I, don't, I don't know, I don't believe that, that devil spirits can get into your head but I think that they can, I don't know. I think that they can, you know, certainly whisper things in your ears or something. I'd have, I have no idea. I mean, there's, there's times that I'm just like doing something totally unrelated and some thought just goes into my head, some horrible thing. And I'm just going, ah, and I, I'm just like, Lord, I'm sorry. I don't even know where that came from. That, I, I never even saw anything like that. I've never even heard anything like that. Uh, I'm sorry, Lord. I, you know, I apologize for it. I mean, I didn't do anything to cause it. It's just like come, something comes into your head and you're going, where'd that come from? It's not the unpardonable sin. Okay, the unpardonable sin is is basically when Jesus Christ is physically on the earth, you know, neither in this world or in the world to come. When he's physically on the earth, going up to him and saying, that spirit that's in you is a devil spirit. That's the unpardonable sin. The un yeah, unpardonable sin, excuse me. Thing in spirit, <laughs> but uh, that's the unpardonable sin. Um, your thought life and things like that, things that you don't have control over, you know. Uh, uh, if, I mean, well, things that you don't have control over, if you have thoughts just popping into your head and you just go, Well, where'd that come from? That is not the unpardonable sin. Let me just read a verse for you here. Uh, Second Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 5 says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So you are supposed to have control over your thought life. Um, and, you know, most Christians will have that, but they'll still have those blasphemous, intrusive thoughts coming into their minds at times. Why? We're living on a battlefield. You know, it's like saying, I went to war and I was, I was so well trained and well prepared as a soldier that nobody ever shot at me. <laughs> uh, if you're well trained and well prepared and you're the elite of the elite, you're going to have more enemies shooting at you, trying to bring you down because you're a greater threat to them. Well, so it is as a Christian. The more sanctified life you have, the more the devil's going to shoot at you. Right? The more his minions will shoot at you. And you'll have stuff popping into your head and you'll be like, oh, huh? You know? And especially in this cesspool that we live in today in the 21st century. I mean, radio waves, cell phone waves, you know, uh, television things. There's so much stuff just going through the air. How much of it can we pick up? I know uh, uh, Dr. Ruckman said the one time about how that, uh, you know, it, Back in the old days, I don't know if it's still this way anymore. I haven't watched television in many, many years because it's mind control. But uh, back in the old days, you know, you'd stand at certain parts within the room with somebody had a TV on, and you'd walk over this way, and the reception would get fuzzy, and you'd walk over that way, and they'd get sharp again. Um, our bodies are, we have an electrical system in our nervous system, and I think we can pick up some of the transmission, if you will, of a lot of these things that are going through the air. You know, if I took a television, if I had a little portable television and I held it up like this, it could pick up and I flipped it on, it could pick up TV waves. And I flick it over to an FM radio station, it'd pick up radio waves. They're going right through here all the time. So it's no wonder that you might have some blasphemous thoughts coming into your mind. But that's not the unpardonable sin. So 
do not worry about those things. Um, I mean, ask for God's God's forgiveness. You know, get that stuff out of your mind. Just be like, Lord, I'm sorry. I don't know how that thing got in there. Please forgive me for that. I don't. I don't even know where this stuff is coming from. Please protect me, Lord. Help me to forget what I just saw or what I just thought or whatever else. Again, Romans chapter seven, Paul talks about, I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. So it's going to be a struggle, brethren. Uh, that's the best thing I can say, but it's not the unpardonable sin. Not possible unless Jesus is physically on the earth and people are blaspheming the spirit that's in him. 